Welcome to the 2022 Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition Winner Showcase. I'm Monica Richardson, Executive Editor of the Miami Herald and El Nuevo Herald. On behalf of the Miami Herald and our sponsors, FIU's College of Business, the Florida Small Business Development Center, and Endeavor, I would like to congratulate the winners and all of the South Florida entrepreneurs who participated in the 2022 Startup Pitch Competition. This competition is the Miami Herald Signature Entrepreneurship Outreach Program. We are very proud of the fact that for more than 22 years, the competition has fostered new opportunities for South Floridians from writing a business plan to executing it, to starting and scaling a business and creating an economic impact in the community. This year's six week challenge accepted entries into two tracks, the FIU track, which was open to all current FIU students, alumni and faculty of Florida International University and the community track powered by Endeavor open to startups in all industries with tech-enabled solutions. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all of the judges who participated in the FIU and Endeavor tracks, and all of the respected business leaders who judged this year's competition. Thank you for volunteering and taking time out of your busy schedules to support and multiply the impact of entrepreneurs in South Florida. We are so very grateful for the support for such strong community partners. Now to today's big event, we're excited to showcase the innovation of young companies in South Florida, the diverse entrepreneurs that lead them and celebrate the winners of this year's Startup Pitch Competition. To kick off today's showcase, I would like to introduce you to our business editor, Paul Baumberger. Thank you, Monica. As the business editor of the Miami Herald, I'm pleased today to share with you information about the winners of our 23rd annual Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition. Today, you're gonna to hear from the CEOs and the co-founders of the two winners in the Florida International University track and our community track, as well as one judge from each of those tracks. Hi, my name is Jesus Padilla. I am the program manager of the Pino Global Entrepreneurship Center here at the FIU College of Business. The Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition has been going on for 23 years. And for over 10 years, the FIU track has allowed our alumni, students, faculty and staff to showcase their entrepreneurial spirit. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you the winner of the 2022 Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition FIU Track Award to Boxy. I'm excited today to be introducing you in our Herald Startup Competition to the winner of the Florida International University category in our 23rd competition, Mr. Lamai Sanchez, co founder, CEO of Boxy and one of our judges in the FIU track, Orlando Espinoza, CEO, co-founder of m and Media. Welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. So we're gonna have a conversation here to learn more about Boxy and its product. Um, Lamai, uh, tell us about Boxy and the lockers that you have devised for the restaurant industry as online ordering volume just continues to escalate. What, what is Boxy going to do to help the restaurateurs? Well, in a nutshell, the short answer is that Boxy provides a solution that helps restaurants manage these online orders using smart lockers. Our smart lockers adapt uh, very well to the existing workflows for restaurants. And by doing so, we maximize restaurant efficiency and we provide the best pickup experience for consumers but also for the delivery drivers. Orlando, so this competition this year involved 30 entries in the FIU track, and you had to really scrutinize these startups closely. What was it about Boxy that really stood out to you? I think that one of the key things that we were looking at was something that was innovative 
uh, something that could actually assist and help other businesses scale and grow. But but you are right, uh, Paul. We had a lot of great entries. We had a lot of great um, uh, submissions that we actually went through. Uh, but in the end, you know, uh, as a, a judge, uh, we actually went and, and looked at where we could actually uh, better equip other uh, entities and other um, business owners. And I think that Boxy uh, came out the winner. Lamai, uh, tell us and uh, tell our audience what it is about Boxy that differentiates you from your rivals. So we believe that in a few years, all customers will expect restaurants to provide smart lockers as the standard pickup method. Just like today, they're expecting deliveries via third-party delivery channels. Um, adoption today in the restaurant industry has been slow because of how complicated and expensive it is for restaurants to adopt this new technology, uh, the smart locker technology. So our competitors typically feature larger, bulky, and very costly units with very low focus on integrations and technology. Uh, Box is trying to change that by shifting the focus into a little more affordable, modular, uh, efficient designs that are highly integrating with existing workloads. Um, we attempt to have an out-of-the-box experience so that it's not different for restaurant operators purchasing a TV, get, getting it out of a box and operating. That's the, the, the focus that we're after. Making sure that restaurants can purchase our units, get them out of a box, and begin using them immediately. We also focus very heavily on making sure that our products is as affordable as possible so that they, they can afford it today. We gotta understand, not every restaurant is gonna be a 3,000 restaurant unit uh, organization, right? A, a lot of the people that we're dealing with right now are mom and pop restaurants, that they also have the need to survive in this day and age of technology and accept online driven orders in a way that's efficient and affordable. So by strategy, we want to make sure that our hardware cost is as affordable and as simple to use as possible to make sure that we can expand adoption within the restaurant ecosystem as, mu as much as possible in as many geographies as we can and as fast as possible. So let's give a little example for our audience of how Boxy really works. So someone orders, say, a pizza from a an Italian restaurant and that order comes in and they have boxy lockers there. How does it work from there until we have delivery or pickup? So to oversimplify the scenario that you just described, um, the consumer still places the order in the most convenient method to the consumer, whether that's using a third party delivery channel of their choice, the restaurant's website or calling into the restaurant or even showing up in person to the restaurant. We accept the orders in all these different channels and we combine the terminology in the industry is we aggregate all these orders uh, using our cloud software. So what happens is when these orders enter the restaurant's ecosystem, we automatically assign a boxy unit to that order so that when the consumer or the third party del delivery driver shows up on site, they don't really need to speak to anyone or make a line or, or guess as to where the order is sitting at. They make their way straight into our lockers and they use uh, different methods of uh, confirming that they are, in fact, the person authorized to retrieve the order. There's QR codes included. There's text messages that we that we send consumers, various ways to do this. And pretty much they um, confirm that they are the person authorized by engaging with our locker technology and they retrieve their order, uh, completely eliminating any lines, completely eliminating the need for restaurant to uh, use valuable staff time to quarterback all these orders coming in. Orlando, um, this year with all the submitters and the entrants in the FIU track, what do you think that says about the entrepreneurship here in South Florida? Uh, well, it's alive and well. Um, I think this may have been my eighth or ninth year that I've been a, a judge uh, in the uh, Miami Herald pitch competition. And, and every year we see more and more uh, of, of FIU students, you know, um, and graduates and alumni uh, submitting uh, their actual business plans. And every year it gets harder and harder. I, I think that, that this year we had such great competitions and, and it's great to meet the, the entrepreneurs um, that are actually looking at uh, the potential of scaling and growing their business and taking it to the uh, next level. And I think that that's one of the key things that when Lima, Lime was talking, 
one of the things that we were uh, asking, some of the questions that I asked was specifically how all of this is tied together for the purpose of not only them uh, creating um, something that other the entities can use that some of these uh, restaurants can actually use, but the way that it simplifies the process for a lot of people that may be cautious about ordering, knowing that their food is actually going to be secure. Um, and I don't know if you've ever gone to a restaurant and walking in and, and seeing sometimes that they're just laid out there uh, for the purpose of, uh, of anybody coming in and grabbing, but making sure that there's something there that it's going to have to his point, uh, something that's cloud-based that people are actually going to verify that they're there to pick up an order specifically that I as a consumer had placed. And I think that that just put people at ease. And I think that's one of the reasons why when we were looking at uh, the aspect of the presentations and everybody that actually uh, presented, one of the reasons why, you know, Boxy actually won and it's not taking anything away from any of the other uh, people that presented um, and actually submitted. They were phenomenal. And I think that this is the first year that everything was so close with the judges and the way that we were actually uh, pointing, you know, giving numbers and so forth by way of uh, the scale. Uh, but it was great. And in the end, you know what, uh, Boxy uh, uh, won, uh, which is a good thing. Lamai, finally, our audience would love to know, when is Boxy coming to the marketplace? When will these lockers be installed at some restaurants and where? So um, I have two amazing co-founders, Ariana Costa and Daniel Degalano, that are really quarterbacking the entire launch of the product. Um, we are live today. So we do have our product being used as we speak with uh, locations from the West Coast of the US, even in Canada. Uh, also, we have locations in Miami, but the locations that we've uh, pre-sold these units to um, have been strategically chosen uh, because of maybe the feedback that they were going to give us or there were strategic uh, relationships with larger restaurant brands that are going to result, hopefully, in more uh, sales uh, our way. The general public uh, can actually start purchasing our units in about three months. Actually, they can purchase today, right? We have our website open. We're accepting pre-orders. So far, I think we have... Uh, two to 300 uh, pre-orders uh, since we opened up our, our funnels on our website two months ago. Uh, we expect that in about three months, we're going to start distributing uh, all the pre-orders and hopefully catch up to, to day off deliveries uh, within three months from today. Lamai, congratulations from the Miami Herald for winning the FIU track in our 23rd annual startup competition. Orlando, thank you for your longtime partnership with us in this competition. And gentlemen, thank you for joining me today to tell our audience more about Boxy. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure being part of this system. And uh, I look forward to what's to come in the future. Yeah, and thank you so much. I think that every time that I do this and I participate, it's a highlight. Um, going through all of these uh, business plans. And, and one of the things that I would encourage people to do, if you didn't win this year, it, it's okay. Resubmit again, because I think that that's one of the, the key elements that we've seen people that have submitted two, three times. And, and every year it just gets better and better and bigger and bigger. So I encourage anyone that was considering applying to go ahead and apply. And if you did apply to submit once again uh, next year when we actually launch the uh, the Miami Herald pitch competition once again. I'll add one more thing on Orlando's uh uh, comments, even if you don't win. So on our perspective, winning was kind of like the extra cherry on top. But the process of dealing with, uh, uh, especially the team behind the scenes that are not present here today, uh, with the FIU team, uh, the business school, uh, was extremely helpful. We went from having an investor deck, which uh, is going to be needed in the next few months for us, that was very raw. And they kept giving us feedback and challenging us to think uh, our way of uh, portraying our product in the eyes of possible investors or even customers. And just that process for us was an invaluable experience, whether we had won or not. So yeah, I strongly uh, encourage you, if you're an entrepreneur and you have an idea, it doesn't matter how small you think you may be, uh, go through the process because the learning curve alone is worth the price of, of, of admission. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. Um, one of the key things that I will tell you that everybody that's ever submitted um, an actual uh, uh, pitch, uh, we always encourage them to reach out to us as judges and we provide them feedback and we actually do talk to them to uh, encourage them uh, to continue on because there were some really great uh, and phenomenal uh, ideas 
um, and businesses that actually submitted. And the overall goal is, you know what, to help one another, to encourage one another and to continue building on that. So, so we always make ourselves available. So it's not just coming in and submitting and us coming in and judging. We actually uh, talk to the businesses once uh, the pitch is over and give them, you know, actual feedback uh, by things that they actually did right, things that they could actually improve and so forth. So that's always one of the, the highlights of the actual uh, uh, judging the, the competition itself. Thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Claudia Duran, Managing Director of Endeavor in Miami. At Endeavor, we have been helping entrepreneurs to dream big, scale faster, and pay it forward for 25 years in 42 different markets around the world. And that is why we're so honored to have partnered with the Miami Herald to manage the community track for their 23rd annual startup pitch competition. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our judges for taking part in this event and to our 12 finalists who pitched their startups to them. You were all amazing. You did not make it an easy task for the judges to select the winner. Now I would like to start by announcing the two runner-ups. Natalie Barabu from Rella, congrats! And Jake Season of Cullum as our second runner-up. Congratulations to both of you. You pitched very well, and the judges are very proud of your outcome. And now, with no further ado, I would like to announce our winner and introduce the 2022 Miami Herald Track Award to Storybook! Congratulations to Francisco Cornejo and the Storybook team. Great job. And please, to our listeners, I encourage you to check out the Storybook app. Thank you again to all the participants and the uh, judges for participating in the Miami Herald pitch competition. Thank you to all for supporting the winners. And good luck to all of you in your endeavors. Take care. See you soon. Now you're going to meet the winner of our community track, Francisco Corneo, co-founder, CEO of Storybook App, and one of the judges in that track, Eric Gavin, Executive Director of Venture Miami. Welcome. Nice Francisco, uh, Thanks so much. Storybook App. So tell our audience uh, about the app and what is this going to do for young parents and their children when it's time to go to sleep? Absolutely. Thanks so much, Paul. A pleasure being here with you, Eric, as well. Um, so Storybook is a, a parent-child wellness and sleep app. What it does, it, it combines bedtime stories, music, and relaxation techniques like infant massage and uh, relaxation, uh, meditation, guided breathing to help children relax and sleep better. So in, in short, while the kid is listening to the stories and the music, the parent will be able to see guidelines on relaxation techniques to tell these stories on their kids' hands, feet, face. Like it's, it's really a, a marvelous experience for the kid and will help parents to enjoy this moment before bedtime to be fully present, providing love and security to their own kids. So that's in, in short what the storybook does. Eric, so this year we had uh, about 40 entrants in the community yeah. track, which is a high number. Then we broke it down to 12 finalists who made their pitches to you and our other judges. So what was it that stood out about Storybook? You know, um, when you get to the final 12, things start to get a little bit dicey when we're, we're trying to pick a ultimate winner. And when even when we're going beyond that, getting to like the top three and the, the top four, uh, it was very difficult for us to make the decision. Uh, we went back and forth quite a few times as the judges, trying to determine things from, you know, baseline where people's uh, objectively, objectively where they stood at, uh, where their financials, how did they speak about them, what their roadmap looks like, uh, what things were they doing to implement and uh, develop their business even more so. Uh, but what it really came down to uh, was, you know, the founder themselves, like who, who was the person who was giving us the pitch and then really um, what their product and what they do uh, connected to us as individuals. And uh, one thing that I can say about Francisco and his company Storybook is that the part of connection really uh, drove it home for me uh, personally as a judge. 
uh, having connection be a very, very strong point within the Miami ecosystem uh, and having that be something that is constantly in the forefront of everybody's mind to continue to help this ecosystem grow. It, it just seemed like it connected so well with what the story of Miami is right now. And um, that kind of definitely drove things home for me on top of objectively Storybook is just a really great company. Um, so when it comes down to it, the founder and that story, um, once you get past the, the objective measures, um, Storybook brought, brought it home for me as a, as a judge personally on that note. Francisco, let's take that segue of uh, connection to improve the connection between parent and child. I know that that is a key element of the Storybook app. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, and thanks for that, Eric. Um, for us, yes, we talk about sleep, but the most important thing that we do is we connect parents with their kids. And, and there's a basic thing that we have to consider. Nowadays, kids go to bed watching a YouTube video with screens on their hands. Like This is not only bad for their health, but it's also robbing the space from the parents to, to share that time. For a lot of parents, the only time of the day where they can spend with their kids is bedtime. It's those five, 10 last minutes of the day. So it's really, really important to make the most of that. And the storybook provides a, a great tool to connect the parent with the child. The, the infant massage techniques, the physical affection has a tremendous impact on the kids. Like when the, when the parent is doing these techniques to their kids, there's so, so many studies that talk about the increase of uh, oxytocin in both the parent and the child. And that what, what uh, creates this bonding, uh, this connection that will last a lifetime. And that is so important in a ch child emotional and mental health. So ultimately what we do is we create this a space where parent and child can be together, can be sharing a loving moment before bedtime. And as a consequence of that, they will see better sleep. They will see an improvement in their relationship. That's where our current users are telling us they see their kids sleeping better, but also feel more, more connected with them. As a follow-up, uh, Francisco, so if we have some viewers out here who really want to look at the Storybook app, how it works, walk them through how they could use it on an iPhone or an iPad with their child. How does that work? Absolutely. Let, let me show you. Maybe that's, that's even better. So... Storybook is really simple to use. Again, there's no screen time for the kid. It's audio only. So you will get to pick a story based on the, your child age and challenges. And then it, when you select the story, like I, I will go for this one, you will be hearing the music and the story while the parent is following the guidelines, just like this. So in this case, this is a back a massage and it's a story recommended for sleep. Hello, I'm Anna. My mom says my name rhymes with banana, but I don't know. It's simple stories, two minutes long. Uh, depending on, this, on the age of the child, we have different recommendations. And the kid will be only listening to the story and the music. The parent will be following these techniques. And even for grown-ups, who, who wouldn't enjoy that? So kids really love this moment. And it's super easy to, to follow. The most important thing is not following the exact techniques, but really enjoying the moment. Eric, you know, I'm sure there are some people listening today who may be inspired by what Francisco's company is doing and what our other winner's company is doing. Your role out there in the Miami community working with aspiring entrepreneurs, what would be a couple of takeaways that you would give them if there are people listening to us today who might be thinking about launching a new venture but might be a little hesitant, might be a little scared, not knowing, you know, what should I do first? Uh, what would be some of the advice and tips that you would give? So <clears throat> thing number one, it's a long journey. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what your business proposition is. Even if you hit on an idea that really clicks with a particular audience, maybe that's a target audience that you have as customers potentially. Or if there are investors who say, this is a really good idea, you should pursue this. Um, but you should be fully expected, regardless of, you know, the initial reactions that you get, whether they're positive or negative, uh, to take that and know that this is going to be a journey that you're going to be partaking in um, for quite a bit of time. Um, so be serious about it. Even if you're doing this part-time, um, spend the time that it takes in order to cultivate 
uh, your company. And then I would also say, and, and I'm pretty sure Francisco can speak to this, build a good team. Um, I, I, I'm not in a venture personally myself, but I couldn't do what I'm doing if I didn't have a really good team around me. And what you really want more than anything in a company and what investors like to see, what we like to see uh, as judges is that you have a good team that's willing to implement and execute your roadmaps. You could be the most intelligent person. You could be the most uh, knowledgeable person within your industry. But if you don't have the proper team to execute, whether that's selling your business, doing business development, whether that's building partnerships, uh, whether that's developing the technology, even if you're a technologist yourself, the team is what really helps expand things out. So um, if I could give kind of two quick ones on that, um, that that's that's kind of what I would first go to. Francisco, when, when you talk about the team behind Storybook App, I know that it, you and your wife are the co-founders. And I know there's a backstory of inspiration in Australia when you and your wife were there with your two kids when you were studying for your master's degree. So tell our audience that backstory that really sowed the seeds for the storybook app that we saw and heard today. Absolutely. Uh, as uh, Eric said, it's so important to have a purpose and have passion for, for what you're building. And we created Storybook because of uh, we had that problem. When uh, we moved to Australia, our kids were uh, four and two. Um, I, I come from the corporate world. I used to work full time on a company. When uh, we moved there, I realized that my kids were already growing and I, I wasn't spending too much time with them. So that was an opportunity for me to reconnect with them. Um, and, and the first thing I noticed is they had everything. They had uh, their food, their shelter, their clothes. They had everything, but something wasn't working on. And that was a, when Daniela, trying to, to find a way to connect better with the kids, um, started to learn about the infant massage. Uh, and it was, a, it was the difference between night and day for, for us. Uh, we went from a place of anxiety, of a place where we didn't have a routine, where we we're still we're struggling to find our, uh, how to, to really connect with our kids, to having our kids fighting each other about who's going to bed first because they wanted their, their massage. Uh, they want, one of their, their stories, that's something that doesn't happen with kids, like fighting for, for who's going to sleep first is, is something really uncommon. And that's when we realized uh, we, we hit on something. The, the infant massage was doing a, a powerful thing for the, for the kids, but the stories and most importantly, the physical affection also being present there. Um, so we decided to create an MVP. We, we launched a very simple app between uh, Daniela and me and a, a small team of people that we gathered. Um, and we started to see the same uh, reviews from the users. The, the first things that we saw is this app is helping my kids to sleep better, but I'm also feeling much better as a parent because I'm finally connecting. I'm uh, having the chance to, to hear about uh, experiences that my kid wa wasn't telling me. We had stories from kids with autism who uh, never spoke to their parents and suddenly started to talk back to the, to the app, telling them how they feel. And, and why we, they were sad. So these impactful reviews started to come in. So we decided to go uh, full-time on Storybook and, and then grew the team and started scaling. So this year, this was your first time entering our startup competition at the Miami Herald and you came out on top. What was your reaction when you found out you were the winner? And what do you think this recognition can do to help boost your company? Well, um, it was an absolute surprise. Um, I'm very confident of what, what we have and, and the achievements we made and how fast we're growing and how many people we're helping. But the other startups were fantastic. Uh, I know them, I know uh, lots of them for the last few months, um, but it was really a surprise. Uh, I'm extremely happy because this will allow us to amplify uh, our vision to, to reach more families. Ultimately, uh, as, as we spoke, we, yes, we want to help on, on the sleep side of things, but the most important thing that we, we want is to help parents reconnect with their kids before bedtime to uh, improve their relationship, to, to have happier, healthier, and most, more successful kids growing up uh, for, to be the, the best generation ever. And it's really exciting to be doing this out of Miami. We moved here recently we're originally from Ecuador and, and having been here for, for a few months and now 
uh, in this conversation with you and being amplified by the Miami Herald, it's such a privilege. So we couldn't be more grateful about this. And I have the, the trophy here, by the way. Just got it. Ah. All it's right, this. there it is. Amazing. 2022 Miami Herald Startup Competition winner, Francisco Corneo, co-founder along with his wife, Daniela Vega. Thank you very much for your time, Francisco. Eric Gavin, Executive Director, Venture Miami. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Paul. Thank you, Eric. On behalf of the Miami Herald, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. You heard today from young entrepreneurs who are a reflection of the expanding technology and innovation ecosystem in Miami. You heard the stories of Storybook App from Francisco Corneo and of Boxy, the winner of our FIU track. You heard from Lamai Sanchez, the CEO and co-founder. We would like to thank them and congratulate them once again. I also want to give a special thanks to our sponsors, our longtime partner, Florida International University, the Florida Small Business Development Center, and our new partner this year, Endeavor Miami. We are already looking forward to the 2023 contest and hope to have many more entrants and be able to showcase the entrepreneurialism in South Florida once again in 2023.